She's got it. You think so? Oh yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome to the beautiful and amazing Killarney Provincial Park in Northern Ontario, Canada for another amateur adventure. In the summer of 2021, my wife Sugar Pie and I took our first steps into the world of outdoor adventuring together when we came to Killarney for the first time together to climb the highest point in the park and the entire ancient Laclache mountain range, Silver Peak. Paddling our cheap inflatable kayak through Bell Lake and hiking several kilometers of trails to the park's highest point with a short but inspiring journey that will go on to shape so much of what we have done since and even who we are as people. When we returned to Killarney a couple months later, the standout adventure for us during the three-day, four-night stay in the park was easily a three-lake paddle to the shore of one of Killarney's crown jewel lakes, Ontario Society of Artists Lake, or OSA Lake as it's known. We had such a great time and the scenery was so stunning along the way that we knew we were going to have to come back and do it again someday. Welcome back Killarney. The following spring we would buy a second inflatable kayak and return to do just that. Hey, you want to tell them where you're at and what the hell you're doing? Yeah, I bet you can't guess what, where we are. We're going to be paddling through four lakes today and camp plenty of night on an island on OSA Lake. It stands for Ontario Society of Artists, so it's probably pretty, huh? Yeah. yeah. So sugar pie, by any means necessary, <laughs> since the zipper is no longer functioning and will never function again, it's gonna open the bag. Yeah, bye-bye. Not how it was designed. <laughs> While most people reach the Killarney backcountry either by foot or canoe, we make do with what we can. We don't own a canoe, and while we could rent one, at $50 per day at least, we figured we could do almost as much stuff with a pair of our own $200 inflatables that are cheap and fit in the trunk of our car. Alright, so, sugar pie's gonna get in the boat, we're gonna get the camera situated on her. The week before, we came to Killarney with our packs full of our camping gear to give the concept a try. Although our campsite was just across the lake, it proved that these might be up for the job. And most importantly, Sugar Pie felt she was up for it too. Yeah. This time out, with nothing but clear skies in the forecast, we ditched the tarp covering we had rigged up the week before and we take advantage of the parts of our extra paddles to extend the paddles we would be using, both for a little more paddle torque of sorts and most importantly, keeping the splashy bits of the paddles further away. These lakes had ice on them just a couple weeks prior. They're cold. I was unaware at the time that this new configuration would take sugar pie a little time to get used to. Oh. The paddles are longer, so I'm just getting used to that. It kind of makes you go a little quicker. Because you're, I guess you're able to get, uh, I'm able to get more of the paddle in the water. I don't really want to go off the because my fiance is on his way. Off to OSA Lake. Uh, uh. Steering it is a little bit different too. Okay. Steering it is a little bit hard. <laughs> Our plan for this little expedition of ours was to paddle through George Lake, Freeland Lake, Killarney Lake, and about half of OSA Lake where we had a campsite booked on one of its islands before returning the next day. A little bit of getting used to at first because it, it, it was actually surprisingly quite a bit to walk the paddles. 
We had arrived in the park a couple hours earlier, but with it being a windy afternoon, we spent some time around the campground before setting off in hopes of some easier paddling. I think it paid off waiting an hour or so because the water's calmed down. Yeah, that helps. Right? Right. Like, this is beautiful. Yeah. In the end, this was probably not the best choice, but for now, the waters were calm and we were in high spirits to start our adventure. Wow, this is the first time I actually feel that I'm catching up to my cameraman. That I feel that I can catch up to him. She's doing quite good. But she seems to be enjoying herself. There I thought I would be way ahead, but no. Clarney is about beautiful rugged landscapes. On George Lake, the southern shorelines are comprised of Canadian Shield granite, and the northern shore is made up of part of the estimated 1.88 billion year old Aklash Mountains Southern Range. Stunning is an understatement. No video or photographs ever really do it justice. Watch out for rocks. I was just gonna say the same thing to you! It's pretty great. Yeah? Wow! Mountains, big giant rocks, pretty blue water. Gorgeous clear blue sky on a spring afternoon. Wow. I certainly like this time of day. Everything looks so bright. And yeah, we're excited to say that so far at least. Ginger pie has a sunburn. <laughs> Our first journey to OSA Lake, we set off from George Lake at nearly the same time as this day, but under overcast skies. By the time we turned west on Killarney Lake a couple hours later, the skies had cleared and Sugar Pie was finer than a little tough to see. On that occasion at least, in her defense, it wasn't that she forgot her sunglasses, the problem was that she lost her sunglasses three times that weekend. This is always subject to change, however. But at the moment, she has them. We have since spent much, much more time in Killarney Provincial Park. We've done all of its hiking trails, including the 78-kilometer Lacoste Silhouette Trail, twice. And after the second of those, we would set out literally the following day on our further 14 days in the backcountry when we paddled our own version of the park's boundary loop by canoe covering over 120 kilometers on more than 30 lakes with more than 30 portages in between them. But at this point in the spring of 2022, Sugar Pie and I hadn't done any of that yet. At this time, we had only spent a handful of nights total in the backcountry over a handful of trips, and only one of those that involved these kayaks. And that was just the week before, and we had only really paddled half of George Lake to do it. None of the longer, harder, and tougher adventures we have completed since would have been possible without having done these smaller adventures like this one first. While we may now consider this a small adventure in comparison to what we've done since, that doesn't mean it wasn't going to be difficult. We knew the distance we would be covering from having paddled most of that together the year before. The difference this time was that we were now in separate boats, each with our own gear on board. This challenge in front of us here was one that we would each have to conquer as individuals on our own through much of it. Hi. Hi. Yes, we would share words of encouragement throughout the trip, we would push each other on, and eventually share the responsibilities of camp, but it would be down to each of us individually to paddle every stroke and take every step for ourselves along this particular journey. You better not have jinxed me with my glasses. 
I hope so, it'll be great. While Sugar Pie to this day continues to insist that she can't actually do any of this stuff without me, the fact is, I've never carried her on my back once ever on any of the hikes we've ever done. And on adventures like this one, I've never paddled a single stroke in her kayak for her either. So the point of this trip, and really every trip since, was to get out and prove to ourselves what we're actually capable of while getting more and more comfortable spending time in the backcountry of amazing places, taking inspiration and newfound confidence into each adventure that follows. With all that said, more than anything else, this stuff is fun. And what a setting. Across this little cove, we can go close to that cliff. No collision! Ah, thanks for the boots! You saw that, everybody. She rammed me. Totally her fault. No. find yourself exchanging stories along the way, even if only very quickly out in the middle of a lake. Hi. Having a fun time? This is great, huh? I, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's so beautiful up here in the springtime. Um, to OSA. Thank you. Oh, we, we love them. That, 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 that canoe would be fun too. These are cheap and fit in our trunk. The scale and size of things in places like this are often impossible to convey in photos and videos. You really have to be there to appreciate it. But I paddled out a little way nonetheless to at least give you some idea. You normally looks tiny as it is, but up against that, you're just like nothing. <laughs> I'm an ant. You're an ant. We'll have to come back when you can jump off it. <laughs> What's that? You first. You first. Still doing good? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. It's turning out to be really good. The largest paddle makes it, it makes you go faster. They're awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know what we're doing from now on, unless we need the other paddles for somebody else. Yeah. 
about halfway across the northern section of George Lake, we see the last of winter stubbornly clinging to a rock on the southern shore. Mark, no! Over there! Well, she's not. Not gone yet. No, just isn't letting go. In her normal life, Sugar Pie works night shifts. On the morning of this trip, I picked her up straight from work with a packed car and we made the five hour drive directly here. Having probably only slept for an hour on that trip at most, we hadn't even made it across the first lake before lack of sleep starts to show and Sugar Pie goes a little funny. What kind of crap is that? Our This is the maturity level we've gotten to. Yeah. Yeah, it is. At the conclusion of our overnight on George Lake the week prior, before coming home, we did a short hike on the eastern end of the La Silhouette Trail and discovered a hidden gem in one of the most unique lakes in the park that we've seen before or since, Little Shegby on the Lake. As we made our way past on the George Lake side, we would make some loose plans to visit there again before the end of this trip. That's where that other lake is, huh? We're not going there, no. We're that, going that lake that we hiked to last weekend? Okay. That's it, in there. Oh, okay, yeah. On the way home tomorrow, maybe we'll uh, stop over there. Okay. Where, where that lake meets up. So we get back here, if we're still in good shape, we'll hang out there for a bit and chill and... Yeah. George Lake is really quite big. If you've been to Clarney and have only ever seen it from the campground... Anyway, we gotta go around the corner. You would really have no idea. If I can get a drink. Before too long, we passed by our campsite from the weekend before and had a look at the quartzite ridge behind it that we had climbed while we were there. There's what we climbed last weekend. Hey, right there. Oh yeah. Wow. I know, it's a long ways up, huh? Oh, it's out. No wonder you were tired. <laughs> no kidding. The view from the top was pretty great and it was no easy climb to get it. The nice part about being on lakes with others is that it can sometimes give you something to follow. Follow them. Follow them. Okay. I'm assuming they're going. Yeah. Move along, young lady, move along. Okay, don't quite follow them. Um there's an island that they're kind of heading towards there. Remember the big black rocks? Yeah. Okay, so you want to be on the right of the back of black rocks. So the other side. Yeah, right this side. Yeah, no, that side. That's right. Yeah, where they're going now. <laughs> because these boats are full of air, they tend to float more on top of the water, with very little beneath the surface. Because of this, they don't always track the straightest. How come your boat's not going straight? No. I mean, you're traveling more or less straight, your boat's just sticking. This is probably less cloudy. It does. 
Also because they are full of air, it doesn't hurt them when you collide into one another. Not that we would do something like that. Mrs. Like cut me off at every opportunity. Boy, you've been great in traffic. Are you gonna go around? Eventually. Let's have some fun. Normally I would say your hood looks like you're a dork, but it's probably keeping the sun off you. Who are you calling a dork? That should be obvious. Well, we had seen several groups out in canoes on our way through George Lake already. We were a bit surprised to find one couple out doing things a little bit different. And I had one question. That looks like fun too. Can you do that wearing a backpack? Yeah? <laughs> I might be sold. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. Enjoy! Go for the right of the black rocks. Pardon? The right of the black rock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Almost done with George Lake. It's pretty big, yeah. You start realizing that when you're paddling across. Yeah. Sugar Pie is someone that likes to have a plan for everything, as far in advance as she possibly can, and often too far in advance for it to matter. With the dock and her first portage in sight, Sugar Pie decides to take a moment of yeah. contemplation while we discuss what yeah. great challenge lies ahead. No. What are you doing? I'm not sure how to cut into the dock. Just pull up beside the dock. Get there first, worry about it later. Uh, this goose is wondering what the hell you're doing. This goose is wondering what the hell you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either, buddy. Yeah, probably. Eventually, we do get moving. Well, it's gonna be dark if we keep going at this speed. I'm pulling off on this. Okay. Still a half mile away. Sugar Pie does manage to negotiate the tricking docking procedures required of a cheap inflatable kayak oh, yay, get it. before getting out for the first portage of the day. I said getting out before the first portage of the day.
Okay, eventually Sugar Pie gets out, and we would embark on the part of the trip I was most looking forward to witness. Thankfully, these boats are not all that heavy, and once you get it balanced properly, it's actually a lot more comfortable than carrying a canoe on your shoulders. I've been waiting all winter to watch this. through the entire 80 meter portage as we left George Lake behind and prepared to head out into the second lake of the trip, Freeland Lake. Freeland Lake the autumn before, much of the lake was covered in water lilies. This being early spring, there's no lily pads. Things were now looking a little bit different. That's different. You can actually see them underneath, they just haven't come up yet. I think the water's too high. And that's good, that means we'll be able to scoot all the way across instead of getting off in the mud, maybe. Although, watching you fall in the mud would be pretty funny. Right back at you. Oh, really? Aren't you mature? Thank you, I'm glad you noticed. I would think someone of your maturity level would have a better sarcasm filter, but okay. Many of Kalani's lakes are surrounded by either quartz or granite rock formations. Freeland Lake is an exception to that. It's surrounded by flat, lowland forests, and because of that, it's much shallower than most of the other lakes in the park. The nice part about that is the water is less likely to get rough, even on windy days, making for a fairly easy paddle. The not so nice part is that the lower water levels often make it tough to reach the shore on the other end of it. But we were hoping that wasn't going to be a problem this time around. We were ready to deal with whatever we encountered. At least I was. able to find a way to dock alongside the logs sticking out into the lake and quickly went about clearing some room for sugar pie to do the same. This would be easy, right? Wow. It can just make it over where I did. Come on, this way. How to find the line. You're gonna have to get up a little bit of speed and try and get as close to where that goes into the water as you can. The only real threat here in not making it all the way to the shore is wet and muddy feet. Put your weight forward. But in Sugar Pie's mind, these waters may have been full of man-eating alligators, piranhas, and quicksand. I said as close to that as you can or you're gonna get stuck. You might have to back up and take a run at it. It's 
right at me. Aim at me and race. Aim at me as fast as you can. There you go. Bring it over here. Fortunately for her, those things would have to wait for some other victims to swallow. We both made it ashore bone dry. Throw your paddle. Let's go, we can work from there. Freeland Lake is down. We got two lakes to go, Killarney and OS. Our second portage of the day was a little longer than the first at 380 meters, but it was still pretty straightforward and short enough that instead of taking everything at once, we would split it into two trips, one with packs and gear and the other with the boats. It's everything but the boat. Yeah, that wasn't so bad, but I don't have the boat. The next lake we would be taking on was Killarney Lake. Even with as much of the park as we've seen since, Killarney Lake remains one of our favorites. All the things that make Killarney so amazing can be found on this lake. From smaller, calm and peaceful sections, like where we would start our crossing here, to the larger open water in the northern section, where you get a closer look at more of the quartz peaks that make up the La Cloche Mountains. After paddling in a more or less easterly direction through the first two lakes, I knew that this pretty much marked the halfway point in our paddle for the day and that before too long we would be turning west towards our last portage in OSA Lake. I was also aware that that meant before too long we would be paddling almost directly into the sun. I wasn't sure Sugar Pie was aware of this however. You got your sunglasses around? Uh. I still think I need them. I'm I'm doing good. Oh yeah? I didn't lose them. Famous last words. We're in the bag with the cell phone and everything. Oh shit. What? Well, cause when we turn the corner up here, the sun's gonna be in your eyes eventually. I'm okay. It'll be funny.
You're doing good. What? You're doing good. Fine. Mm. Okay, we're going through here. This is really pretty. I do. Army is another big lake, isn't it? It's a decent size. I don't know if it's as much as George, maybe about almost. If we just keep moving, we'll do all right. Okay. At this point in our adventuring, we had spent most of our time either on mountain bikes or on foot hiking and backpacking, so it's no wonder Sugar Pie would begin feeling it in the arms by this point in our paddle. Yeah, okay. I'm coming slowly but surely. Okay. Wow, I feel it in the arms. Huh? <laughs> Wow, I feel it in the arms. Yeah, you'll sleep good anyway, huh? It's alright. Thankfully, she seemed open to my solution for her. I'll just consider you bear bait. Yeah. Of course, when things get difficult, you can always look for some kind of inspiration from your heroes. Guys are funny. Going and going. Well, it was clear at this point that we weren't exactly moving through these lakes as quickly as we probably needed to. We were still pretty determined to make it to where we were supposed to be going. Although, that didn't stop me from considering some possible plan B scenarios if we were going to come up short. If it was later, like if I knew we weren't going to make it across this lake before dark, I would go and see if anyone were at that camp and we would just take it. I know, I kind of wish that we got a code for campsite. <laughs> okay, so we got to be careful when we come around this corner here. Because there was like fallen brick trees and shit last time. It's alright. As we made it closer to the end of the first section of Clarny Lake, we were welcomed by some of the louder local birds. Well, these boats are pretty tough and seem to handle everything we've tried with them so far. The one thing that does make us a bit nervous is underwater trees and branches that could potentially put a hole in the boat. It would likely take punctures in multiple sections before things became catastrophic, and we did have puncture kits and duct tape with us just in case. Nevertheless, we tend to stay vigilant when we paddle through these tighter sections that bring us closer to shore. As we made it through the last of the tight sections of the lake, the view opened up and we had just one last point to make it past before we would make the turn west. See the white rock up here? Yeah. That's the crack. Oh wow. 
The crack is the park's most popular hiking trail for day trippers. From the top of the ridge, you get possibly one of the best views in all of Ontario. We've been to the top from one direction or another a total of seven times so far, and it doesn't get old. Um, yep. Okay. Yep. We just hang close to this shore and keep working our way around these points. Around here? Yep. Huh. How's your uh, vision doing? The sun is getting in my eyes, but that's okay. It's not too bad. Okay. Here, you go ahead of me for a little bit. If you can. We should make camp before sunset. I just uh, took off the sunglasses a little bit too early. She did. When you're out here doing things like this, it's maybe too easy sometimes to make your destination the entire point of your journey. We don't get up to these places nearly as much as we would like, however, so for us, we really try hard to soak in every moment of the journeys themselves. We try to appreciate as much as we can, not just the places we go, but the places we are at any given moment along the way. Happy we're out here? Yes, I am. Yeah. I am overall happy. What's that? I am overall happy. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work, but you know what? Don't think about it. I'm just paddling. I'm... I know. I'm kind of really enjoying the scenery right now. It's pretty awesome on this lake, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is Killarney Lake after all. It is so. It sure lives up to that. I don't know if we have a current with us or what, but it sure feels like we're going fast. Yeah, this is... I like it. I'm liking this. Yeah. In the middle, I think I'm seeing sticks or stocks or something. There's rocks. There's rocks in between those two camps in the middle. Okay. Way off in the distance you're talking? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll stay just on the, to the left of them. Those might be ducks there. Like the two things that you're kind of like headed towards. They're birds. Birds? Bird. Okay. Yeah. Not too worried about them. No, no. They may be on or off though, so I am going to keep out that way a bit. Yeah. 
just wish I wasn't being blinded. <laughs> Again. We're uh, getting close to the last portage. Uh -huh. You kind of see the shore over there. Yeah. Uh, around this last point up here. We've laid for a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Sounds like sugar pies having fun back here. That's good. It's a hard one spot. Even with sunglasses, looking for a tiny yellow sign on the western shore in the evening was not going to be easy. Thankfully, having done this before, I had a pretty decent recollection of where we should be going. Woo. I will say, uh, it's right over here. Right over here? You see, you can't see it with the sun in your eyes. I couldn't see it with the sun in my eyes. Well, the sun isn't really too badly in my eyes. I just don't see it. Look for a yellow sign on a tree. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. I see the yellow sign. We've only been on this lake for an hour. Really? Huh? And, and this is a bigger paddle than what OSA is. As long as we get over there in time, we're good. Okay, good. Now that we are about to reach the last portage of the day, and the fact that we made decent time in Killarney Lake, we are optimistic about our chances of reaching camp before dark. Like the sun isn't in my eyes. <laughs> That's gonna change when we get on to OSA. Oh, but, well, uh, I'll get my sunglasses out, Dad. Oh, yeah. Short portage to OSA. And set up camp and watch out past sugar pie snow and lunch bear. Woo! The last portage of the day would be 455 meters and would take us to OSA Lake's eastern shore. Well, it wasn't anything too difficult, we did it in two trips once again, and unfortunately burned up nearly 45 minutes of daylight by doing that. <sighs> by the time we were ready to get back in the boats, the sun had already dropped behind the mountains, and we knew that it would be a little bit of a race to make camp before dark after all. It would also become clear that Sugar Pie taking the time to find her sunglasses before getting back on the water was a bit of a waste of time. Well the good news is she got her sunglasses, the bad news is the sun disappeared behind the mountain. This side of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we didn't paddle on this one last time, we just came and looked. Yeah. It's 
pretty, huh? Yeah. Here she comes across the OSA Lake. Like the little steamboat that could. Pardon? Nothing. All right. I first paddled on the OSA Lake more than 30 years ago while I was on a camping trip with a bunch of family. It was my first trip to Killarney since I was a child, too young to remember. I fell in love with the landscapes, giant rock formations, crystal clear waters, and of course the stunning Lacoste Mountains immediately. Well, Killarney has always been a big part of my entire family's lives, and so many of them have been coming here for decades and do so to this day, it wasn't until that trip 30 years ago that I discovered that Parkside Killarney had campsites beyond the campgrounds. I grew up camping in many other places like this, but every one of my family had only ever stayed in campgrounds. Over the years, tents became tent trailers, and tent trailers would become little apartments on wheels. As an adventurous type kid that I was, that all seemed too convenient and modern to me. When a cousin and I, in our uncle's canoe, paddled across George Lake one day during this trip 30 years ago, we discovered a little orange campsite sign near the shore in a clearing complete with fire pit. I knew that this was something I just had to try. When we returned to the campground, we either bought or borrowed a map and discovered that almost all of the bigger lakes in Clarny had campsites on them as well. After getting permission to borrow the canoe again, I packed up my tiny two-person tent, we packed our sleeping bags, our families donated enough food for a day, and we set off from the George Lake campground along nearly the same route to the same island that Sugar Pie and I had booked for this adventure. The unfortunate part of that being 30 years ago, however, is that the memory of this lake itself had faded somewhat. And although I roughly knew where we were supposed to be going, I had last checked a map before getting on Killarney Lake a couple hours before, and I had forgotten how many islands were actually on this lake. As we would make our way across, I was never entirely certain which island we should actually be aiming for, only that it was at least one of the ones beyond a certain point. Eventually I would spot what I thought might have been our campsite or another one like it. Are we getting close? Yeah, see that island that we're aiming straight at? Yeah. That's it. Wow! Not this one, the one that's like, you can see the smoke going behind it. Okay. Okay, at least we can see it. So yay, I'm happy with that. Go ahead, I'll follow. Maybe. Gonna pump your blue butt off. Yeah. Like just straight ahead? Yeah. Cool. The smoke is going behind it. Okay. Cool. Or you can camp on that island. <laughs> Look at that. It's a little bit small. Oh. I want to get close to this little island because it might be our camp. Watch out, there's a rock over there. I see it. Aim for this little island, hon. That's our camp, hon. As we got close enough to it that I could actually see a fire pit on it, I was sure it must be a proper campsite of some sort. And as we had been on the lakes for several hours now, and neither of us had slept in over 24 hours at this point, I decided that whether this was our site or not, we would stay. This is our camp. Pardon? This little island. That island? Yeah, I think so. If it's not, I think we're going to take it anyway, <laughs> but I suspect it is. We come to these places with complete respect for the environment we're in. We've always practiced the leave no trace thing, and we do our best to follow park rules wherever we may be. We both honestly regret having not made our actual destination on this trip, and the 
lessons learned here would go on to influence the way we've planned all of our adventures since. However, there was a fire pit and three grills sitting beside a tree when we arrived, so we certainly weren't the first or only people to ever make use of the island. Here we go! And in the end, we would make sure to at least leave it in a better condition than before we got there. With all that said, what a stunning place to spend the night. Oh my goodness, look at this! Wow, this is so cool! Well, that was one heck of a paddle, wasn't it? Yeah. And you survived? Yes. How, how was it? Did you enjoy that? I did enjoy it. I did find it challenging, but sometimes the challenge is good. Yeah. But at the same time, wow, it was a challenge. We live for challenges, don't we? I don't know if I live for them, but but once in a while, I guess I'll see. You get talked into them. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah. All right, let's get these boats up and we'll get camp up. Um, but we're finally at camp. When the sun rose the following morning, we felt refreshed, reinvigorated, and absolutely blown away by the beauty of this location. Morning at the salon. <laughs> you sleep good? Yes. <laughs> Actually slept. <laughs> really good. Were you tired? Yeah, I was pretty beat. <laughs> I don't know why. She's a wuss. Sugar pie over there is just getting us our morning coffee. We're gonna get ourselves woken up and then before too long start packing up and head out. I don't believe this is our actual campsite. I think our actual campsite might be either that island over there. Sugar pie's working over the last of the fire. Lots of debris and crap like that around on this island, so, you know, we've been burning it. Fire pits and everything were here, so I'm assuming it's a winter camp. So, we're not camping anywhere that wasn't already a camp of sorts. Ready? Ready as Alright, let's go. You hop in, I'll make sure your camera's set and then I'll give you a shove off. It shouldn't take much. You'll probably slide off as soon as you get in anyway. Bye bye OSA Lake camp that we probably weren't supposed to be on. Sorry Clarny, we didn't quite make it to ours before the sun came down. We left it a little better than when we came because it was kind of a mess from the winter campers. Anyway, very cool. Alright.
It was so long. It was such a long journey, but it was it was really amazing. At, there was parts where it's like I don't know if I can do this, but it but we did it. We did it. Yeah. yeah.